All right, I think that's enough time for those who are going to join us. Maybe we have a couple of stragglers coming a little bit late. Um, so first of all, those of you who are here this evening, um, thank you so much for coming to the virtual open house that is being hosted here at NSU um, by our bio biology department. Um, with us evening, we have a couple of different faculty members, department members, as well as some um, previous alumni as well and current students. So for those of you that are here, thank you so much. Um, this evening, I would like to also start by recommend by having a, a great welcome by our Dean of the University, Holly Baumgartner. Um, she is the Dean for Helmholtz College of Arts and Sciences. She, you know, she does a great job of talking about how we do a great job combining um, both the arts and the sciences, particularly with you know the varying programs that we do offer here at the school. So welcome uh, to NSU's Helms College of Arts and Sciences at the, and the Guy Harvey Oceanographic Research Center. Uh, the college is NSU's intellectual and cultural foundation, firmly anchoring university in liberal arts and sciences necessary for the 21st century workforce on into the graduate school. Uh, we engage you in a cutting edge selection of majors and minors built on innovative models and relevant technologies. Um, so like I said, Holly is fantastic. We love having her as the Dean. Um, and continuing forward, Megan, if you would go ahead for me, thank you very much. Um, this is part of our um, Fort Lauderdale Davy main campus. Um, for those of you who will be in this department, most of your classes will be over on this facility as well. This includes our Alvin Sherman Library facility, which is a beautiful five-story library. It's one of the biggest in Florida itself. Um, as well as the Don Taft University Center and Innovation Technology Information Center. There's a lot going on on main campus where you'll have your classes, which is great. Go ahead, Megan. Um, this is the Oceanographic Research Facility that's on the intercoastal waterway over in Dania Beach. Um, it's in actually in a state park, which is fantastic. You will have potential access as a student if you want to go take a look at the facility. That is great. You are more than welcome to do so. Some of our other graduate programs that we do offer you at the university, um, obviously we are here for tonight for our biological sciences, both the health studies and the research, which is fantastic. Both the department chairs are with us this evening, but I think I will get us started by introducing the department chair who I know is coming to us. So this is Dr. Emily Schmidt-Levin. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Dr. Schmidt. Um, she earned her PhD in biology at the University of Miami, worked as a postdoctoral researcher for the Nature Conserv Conservancy. Um, her area of research include protein modeling, innovations in science education, genetics, genealogy, um, fish identification and survey techniques, as well as coral reef ecology and conservation. Um, Emily, I know you are here with us this evening, so if you would like to um, take it off while we have you with us this evening and introduce your other faculty members that are going to be talking to our students this evening. That would be fantastic. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you and welcome. Um, I'm speaking to you from one of our lecture halls on campus with actually some students here who just finished listening to a lecture series by Dr. Stephen O'Brien. It's uh, open to the public. Dr. O'Brien's one of our Academy Award-winning scientist who is on the faculty in the De Department of Biological Sciences, and it's open to the public. If you're interested, um, you can send an email. We'll get you able to watch those. But just want to send a very, very warm welcome, and um, you're going to be meeting my colleagues. Uh, Dr. Rutenring's coming up, Dr. Johnston, some alumni, and we really hope that you're inspired and encouraged when you hear about our graduate program as we prepare you and any student really to the next step in their education. So welcome and thank you. I will pass it off to my colleague, Dr. Deanne Rutnerine, who um, is the program director here in the biology department and she really mentors students through the health studies concentration. She has an excellent track record. If you listen to her advice, you will find success. Uh, you have to work really hard, but you will find good success. And also my colleague, Dr. Matthew Johnston, and he is spearheading or organizing the research concentration. And stay tuned, we're expecting a bioinformatics online concentration. It's not fully born yet, so we only uh, just tell you about it to excite you. And stay tuned um, for February. That's when you would uh, potentially be able to apply for that. So I leave it to my very capable colleagues and welcome. 
Thank you, Dr. Schmidt. Well, welcome everybody. I represent the Health Studies concentration of the Master of Sciences in Biological Sciences. And the Health Studies concentration is actually a 12 month concentration. At the end of that uh, one year, you actually do get your Master of Sciences degree in, with a concentration in health studies. We have a three semester program. It is a lockstep program, which means you have specific courses that are prescribed for you. And I'm not quite sure if you can actually read the slick there, but you can see the summer courses, you have the fall courses, and you have winter courses. We do understand that we have a variety of students that uh, hope to go to professional school. Um, we know there are students for PA, AA, OT, PT, dental, and medical. And so in the summertime, we have a physical diagnostic skills course, but then that's also being offered at the same time as an introduction to the dental professions. So the students that are interested in dentistry will take that course while the others will stay with physical diagnostic skills. The introduction to the dental profession is actually taught by the faculty members from the College of Dental Medicine. So it's a really good way to get to know the faculty there, especially if you're interested in the NSU uh, College of Dental Medicine. The program is collaborative. We have professors teaching from the College of Dental Medicine, from the College of Pharmacy, and from the Department of Chemistry and Physics. And as I said, it's um, you will also have a free Kaplan test prep. Now that is giving in the summertime as soon as you register for classes, you are given the access to the Kaplan test program. We do advise our students to take their standardized exams before the fall semester when you're really going to start hitting your heavy classes. Each student is given a faculty mentor at the start of the academic year. This is someone who teaches in the program that you can always approach and ask questions, et cetera. We pride ourselves on our small class sizes. It's always 30 students or less. And you can see your career options there and opportunities. And of course, the curriculum is also, as I said, a prescribed curriculum. So we do have guaranteed interviews at some of our professional programs here at NSU after you complete specific requirements. Those requirements are actually prescribed by those colleges themselves. So we do have guaranteed interviews with the College of Pharmacy, the College of Dental Medicine, the College of Optometry, the Physician Assistant, and the Anesthesiology Assistant Program. Once again, you do have to meet their specific requirements complete the master's program, and you will get that guaranteed interview. And I will turn it over to Dr. Johnston. Thank you, Dr. Rupnarine. Um, So my name is Matt Johnston. I help manage the research side of the master's program. It is the sister program to the health studies. So our target student is a little bit different. Um, we are um, looking at students that are interested in doing actual uh, uh, in the lab research. And they go on to do uh, a number of different things. They may go on, continue on to uh, a PhD, or they may continue on to uh, an environmental agency or a science lab, genetics lab, something like that. So we do share a number of the core courses with the health studies, and then we have some additional cores as well. Um, there are going to be a few changes I want to mention about the program coming up. So um, we will be, we are going to be reducing the number of credits from 30, the current 36 to 30, and this is going to be starting in the fall of 2023. And as Dr. Schmidt mentioned as well, we are very excited to be offering a bioinformatics uh, major, which is even a little bit different than the, the two research tracks that we have now. The bioinformatics major is going to be completely online, and it will be a lockstep program similar to the health studies program. So stay tuned for that. Again, that will be announced officially and hopefully in the next couple of months. So in the current uh, research track, we have um, basically two uh, subtracks or sub subdisciplines where um, we have either a capstone or we have a thesis path. So a uh, thesis path, a, the student does original research. So they may be interested in studying um, fish out in the ocean or snakes in the Everglades. They'll come up with a research topic. They'll develop it and actually do the research um, and then write a paper and do a presentation. Um, and then we also have a capstone track, which is where someone will um, 
pick a topic that they're interested in and then do a review of what has been done on the topic over time. And then they similarly, they will do a oral defense of their uh, project and write a, a paper. They're equivalent degrees. It's just that the thesis track has a little bit more research involved and the capstone track has uh, some additional uh, courses instead of the research. Um, can we move to the next slide there, Megan? So um, this is a 24 month program. So it is in, instead of the lockstep uh, 12 month program like the health studies, ours is a little bit longer. We have a little bit fl more flexibility in how and what courses students take. So they are not prescribed a dedicated course map. They um, you know, kind of uh, forge their own path taking the courses that they want um, outside of the, of course, uh, required courses that we have. So an, our faculty have a, a number of research interests. We have a lot of faculty that are in the world of genomics and microbiology, um, bioinformatics. We are hiring some new uh, faculty members that are specialized in bioinformatics. I personally um, am uh, specialized in computational biology. Um, so we have a wide diversity of faculty uh, mentors to choose from. Uh, in the thesis track, 40% of the credits are dedicated to research, which is uh, uh, more than most other universities. So a lot of your time will actually be spent doing research, not just taking courses. So that's a benefit. Small class sizes, um, even smaller probably than the health studies track. Uh, typically the class sizes are you know, 10, 15 or, or less. Um, and we also do offer some department funds specifically for the thesis track where we um, provide you with funds to um, buy equipment or um, things to support your research while you're taking your research credits. Um, so uh, many different uh, opportunities uh, uh, in, in, on the research side. Um, can we move to the next one? I think the next slide, so this slide shows just how much research credit we have in the, the, the research tract compared to some other comparable universities. So you're not gonna be sitting in a classroom all the time, you're actually going to be doing uh, you know, applied research. Um, so that's a great benefit of our program. Let's see, is that the? We also do a computational molecular bio, biology certificate. So this is a this is a certificate program that we have. So in, if you are interested in the genomics world and doing um, um, large data analysis, we do have the certificate opportunity. You take four courses and then earn your certi certificate. Um, as I mentioned, we are going to be having a bioinformatics. This is kind of a mini bioinformatics um, major. So if you are interested in just taking a few courses and getting um, you know, some experience to help with your job, this is a very good opportunity um, as well. Okay, I think that's the, that is the research side. Um, now we're going to move on to some of our alumni. We have a couple of our recent alum and a current student that are here joining us today. I'm going to turn it over to them for the moment. Some of them will be popping in and out of the session today because they are very, very busy um, with their jobs and for those that are um, still in school. So they will pop in when they get here and we'll gladly have them introduce themselves. So um, I think we have one alum from our health study side and a current student from our research side. So if you guys would introduce yourselves, tell us a little bit about your time here in the program um, and where you are now if you are an alum. I guess I'll go first. Um... Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. So as mentioned previously, this, um, well, let me start with my name. I'm Wilner Triana, and I graduated from the Health Studies Concentration Program back in May of 2021. Currently, I'm a first year dental student at NSU's College of Dental Medicine. And it's been a, a fun time thus far, uh, but I wanna say that this, master's program definitely prepared me for what was about to come, at least from the health um, studies aspect. The workload is very similar or resembles a lot the amount of information that you will be exposed to within your first year, uh, whether it's medical, dental, optometry, all those follow a similar path within the first year or two in terms of um, the classes you take and the amount of testing 
um, that you get done. So this is my first semester and I am able to enjoy life more, I want to say, because I've been exposed to most of the information that is being assigned to us, at least within the first few exams of each class. Because the way that the master's program is built is for you to integrate everything together. And every, every sort of class that you're taking is not just like a random class that you don't need. It's because the information provided at that time is running um, parallel to the information on another class and they combine like somewhere in between in order for you to make connections, which is what is expected of you in the professional world, in medicine or whatever um, profession you choose in the health study side. You know, you have to make connections here and there between biochem and pathophys and even anatomy. So I wanna say that the master's program in biological sciences with the health studies concentration definitely prepared me in the short time frame that it was for what was about to come. And I recommend 100% um, to study a lot and practice your study skills prior to um, involving yourself in grad school, professional school. Make sure that you have your priorities straight and listen to the advice given by the staff. Dr. Nareen, thank you. Okay. Um, I guess I'll go next. Hi, my name is Estefania Marin. I am a second year now in the Biological Sciences Research Track Masters. And kind of like what Dr. Johnson was saying is pretty much correct. Um, we do a lot of research. It's more you working on your actual research than you being kind of like um, doing classes all the time. You do still have classes, but I feel like the good thing about having a longer program is that you do get a nice healthy balance between being able to work on your research while also managing your course loads. Um, you also have a lot more freedom with picking your schedule, which I've always enjoyed because once you start your thesis credits, you have to keep working on your thesis project throughout but you get to pick which classes you take while you're doing that also. Uh, so, so far it's been really fun. There's a lot of opportunities if you take this track. I've had the pleasure to present my research now at multiple conferences, whether it be at NSU or further. Um, and there's also a lot of opportunities to help fund those uh, trips as well. Um, the school does have different grants that you can apply for. We actually recently flew out to Washington with my lab and we got the pleasure of presenting our research there. So those are all really good kind of things that you can add to your resume and talk about and give you a little bit more street cred in the world of science. So it's been a really, I would say it wasn't easy, but a very rewarding process thus far. I haven't finished yet, but so far I feel like I have grown a lot and I have had a lot of opportunities that I feel like you wouldn't get doing a different type of master's because it is very based on you working on your research. That is like the core focus of it, um, especially if you are doing the thesis track. Um, so it is very rewarding to get to work on your research while still building your education. Thank you both. And like I mentioned, um, some of our other alum will pop in through while we're having our session. So when they come in, I'll gladly pause and let them continue on and tell you a little bit about their time and experience. Um, I do want to also point to the, our guests that if you have any questions, we do have a Q&A um, that is available for you guys. Our, our alum and student will be happy to answer some of the questions that might come in um, and we'll open up in the chat box as well. So feel free to, to pop in and ask us a question if you have any. But my name is Megan Troy, and a lot of you will be working directly with me when it comes time to submit your applications. Um, so I just want to go over what that process is going to look like. 
most important application deadlines. Um, they are different for both programs. So please, if you are applying to the health studies program, this information is for you. Our health studies program is a summer start date only. So that means our students will be starting every summer and they'll be able to continue on to the program to finish in the winter semester of the following year. So the next application cycle is for summer 2023. And that application is open and it's available now. The application deadline will be May 15th. What needs to come in for this program is, of course, the application. Um, there is a $50 application fee, but I will point out to the students that thank you for joining us this evening. I'll send you something very special in your email um, to probably tomorrow or Monday. So if you haven't gotten your application in, just wait on that email. Um, but two letters of recommendation are required. It is very important, both for research and for our students that are applying to health studies, that one of those letters does come from a faculty member. So reach out to a science professor, um, somebody that you have had a class or two classes with, but somebody that can speak to you as a student. So two letters of recommendation, all of your official transcripts. So if you have gone to more than one institution, it's very important that you submit all of your official transcripts. If you have gone to a university outside of the United States, it is a requirement that you have your official transcripts evaluated. Um, if you have any questions about that, I will definitely give you guys my contact information before the end of this evening session. And you guys can feel free to give me a call or send me an email and I'll be happy to go over it. Within the application, there is a section for a personal statement. This is your opportunity to tell us um, how you feel the program is going to benefit you. If you are interested in the health studies program, you can talk about how you think this program will help get you into the next stage, um, into that professional school that you might be interested in. Um, and then, of course, GPA. We are going to be looking for strong academic candidates. Um, so we're looking for overall GPAs at least a minimum of a 2.85 for consideration. Um, that is not a guaranteed admission, but uh, again, for consideration. Then we're going to look at our research students, our students that are interested in our research program, you have a start date of any term. So the next start term is winter 2023. That application is due by November 15th. So that means hurry, 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 get that in, get all of your documents submitted. Um, summer 2023 has an application deadline of April 15th. Please pay attention to that because it is different from our health studies students. So April 15th for all of our students interested in research for summer of 2023. And then of course, fall term, fall July 15th. Any student that's interested, so the research students, the number 15 is what you have to really can think about. And for winter, it's November, summer, April, and for fall, it's July. All of the required documents are the same, so I'll go over them again. Um, your application, the application fee, um, your official transcripts from all institutions that you have attended, and of course, a, a a credit evaluation, a WES evaluation, um, or NASIS evaluation for any student that went to an institution outside of the United States. Two letters of recommendation again, in that personal statement. I definitely recommend any student that is interested in research, look at what our faculty members are doing. See if there's somebody that interests you a little bit um, that you might be interested in working with. Um, and you can write about that, tell us, because that then helps our research department to kind of navigate who might be your mentor when it comes time for you to start your program. And again, uh, that, that GPA, minimum of a 2.85 that we're going to look at for consideration. Of course, the higher, the better. Um, but if you have any questions about the admissions process, the application, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and in that, let me go over what the application um, actually entails. You're going to be creating an account. This account, if you've created more than one application, you will be able to see all of them there. Um, it's very important to make sure when you are applying to biological sciences that you are paying attention to the term. I mentioned already that health studies starts only in the summer. So if you have already submitted an application and you did not choose summer and you chose health studies, I will be reaching out to you and I will be adjusting your application to summer. For research, you can apply for any term. Um, so make sure you're paying attention to which term you're choosing and which concentration you're choosing when you're submitting your application. 
If you're having any issues, um, there is a help function on the application portal. Um, you can always give them a call or send an email to help at nova.edu. If for some reason that's you're not getting anywhere, reach out to me and I'll direct you on where you need to go. Of course, we're going to look at your biographical information. So of course, your name, um, your address, all those things. Please list every institution that you have attended. Um, that way we know which transcripts we're to be waiting on. And when that happens, I do see your transcripts. So if you only send the one and I see that there are transfer credits from other institutions, I'm going to reach out to you asking you to provide the other transcripts. The program of study I've already mentioned to be very careful when you're choosing, you're gonna say, biological sciences, then the concentration area is going to open up for you. Pay attention to when you're choosing. Um, the campus, it's okay. It's only going to allow you to choose only Oceanographic Center, but that is just based off of how our college is labeled. That part is fine. Um, so again, the documents, if you're applying, please list out all of the colleges and institutions that you've attended. There is a screen for that. So you could just add another school if you need to, um, in order to make sure we are aware of which transcripts we should be waiting on. And then lastly, once you've submitted the application, there's gonna be an opportunity to then review, um, to add in your letters of recommendation. So this part is very simple. You just need the contact information of the person who's going to do your recommendation. Um, if for some reason they've already done it, they've already got it, they just wanna email a PDF, that's fine. They can email it directly to us and we can add it to your application. But two letters of recommendation, one of them coming from a faculty member, and then um, if you have any additional supporting documents you would like to add, this is the place where you can add it. Want to introduce you to our team. So while I did say that I'll be working very closely with all the biological sciences students, there is a team that helps the admissions office. And of course, they will help you any way that they can if necessary. Um, you heard from Brett earlier in the program. He is our director. And then we have Theodore, also known as Teddy. Um, if you've ever decided you wanted to come and take a quick tour of our oceanographic center, you've probably met him. Um, Andrew is not here with us today, but he is our administrative coordinator. So if for some reason, reason we're all out of the office, you probably got him to answer the phone uh, to let you know that we aren't here, but he'll take your message and pass it to us. Again, down at the bottom of the screen is our admissions email address. Any of us have access to this email, so that means anybody can answer it. Um, feel free, reach out to us there. Likely, I'm going to be the one replying back to you, and then you can feel free to email me as well, but I'll put my contact information in the chat for everyone later. All right, when it comes to the to cost of tuition, these are the graduate fees and tuition for our department. Um, I don't think it was mentioned earlier, but I'll make mention of it now when I get to the next screen. I think it's there, yes. Our financial aid and scholarship web pages. So the great thing about our biological sciences department is that they do have some funding available for students. It's not gonna be for everyone, unfortunately, but um, once students are admitted, once, a, once our students are admitted to the program, then um, our, our wonderful chair will likely reach out if there are any opportunities for scholarship um, or if there are any graduate assistantship positions that might be available for our students to apply to. Um, that has happened in the past, and so I definitely want to make mention of it. Um, and then, of course, financial aid. So our students that are looking for financial aid packages, make sure if you're applying to the health studies program that you fill out two FAFSAs um, because the summer term falls in the previous academic year while the fall and the winter term will fall into the new academic year. So we will talk about that, of course, once you guys are admitted and I can definitely share more information about that. Lastly, follow us on social media. I don't know how many of you might have um, connected with us on social media to find out about this evening, um, but that is a great way to find out about what Helmos College is doing and what Helmos College has going on when it comes to admissions and admissions programming. We have a Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, and LinkedIn. So you are free to find us. Follow us back, and if we're having any lecture series, um, if we have student lectures and sometimes faculty lectures, if we're hosting any events on campus, this is the, the quickest and easiest way to find out about it. 
So what I want to do is turn it back over to our department um, to spotlight a few more of their alumni. And I think someone else came in. So let me just see if it's another one of our alum. Yes, yes. yes Chelsea. Um, so Chelsea's here. Chelsea, go ahead. I'm going to open up the floor for you to just introduce yourself. Tell us how the program was for you and what you're doing now. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Nice to see you all. Um, I graduated last year. It seems so far away. Um, but I did graduate last year with my master's. Um, and I am currently a medical student at FIU HWCOM. So I started this year, this August, and I applied after um, graduating from the master's program. Is there anything else I should say? Yeah, Chelsea, tell us about your time in the master's program. You know, what do you think it did for you and how you think it helped you, you know, get into medical school and how is it helping you to cope right now with medical school? Okay, so I really enjoyed my time in the master's program. I was like around the COVID stage. So it's online for my first half and then hybrid for the next half. Uh, so I enjoyed the second half more where I was like in person and able to be in class and on campus and studying that way um, because I group studied mostly and I would be on campus pretty much every day. Um, in terms of how this program helped me for medical school, um, it helped me a lot with understanding MCAT concepts and applying. But as of right now, I would even say it's helping me so much. Even Dr. Rupnarine's cardiovascular lecture from pathophysiology I just got all my notes because we're doing that right now in class and her notes are literally identical to what I'm learning right now. Um, so everything they're going to be teaching you is going to come up in medical school if you are if you want to go to medical school. Um, so it's definitely, a, it was a great use of my time and a great way to kind of prepare myself for the rigor of medical school, which is still much more rigorous in the master's program, but there are so many correlations that every time I see something, I just think, oh, I've seen this before. I remember what this is. So I, I never feel completely lost. And I think that that is really helping with my grades and so that I'm not struggling as much as I would if I didn't go to this program. Thank you so much. And I think one more alum popped in. She was stuck over in attendees. So go ahead and introduce yourself, take yourself off of mute, let us know who you are, um, how the program was for you, and what you're doing now. Hi, I'm Lau. Sorry, I, I was working. Um, so I graduated in June this year, and since then I got a job at the University of Pittsburgh, um, where I'm at. <laughs> um, I think the biggest thing that helped me, I think, with anything, other than like the courses was uh, the research track. Um, it really like helped me sort of understand that research is not like a simple question, hypothesis, try it out sort of thing. There's a lot more steps involved. And um, it, it also like, I would say that and, and working with my PI, um, working with other lab members, uh, having the opportunity to go uh, to conferences and present um, that gave me skills that right now I use pretty much in my day to day at work. We have weekly lab meetings. Um, we are going to have a poster um, presentation sort of session at the end of the, the year. And in terms of like problem solving, critical thinking, those are skills that you use every day in the lab and having had the experience of doing my own research during this program like really prepared me for success. So, yeah. All right, I'm thank you all for joining us. Um, and if you see any questions in the chat that you feel comfortable answering, um, whether it's, if it's about experience as a student in the program, feel free to answer that as well. Um, I'm, I'm happy to have you guys answer any of the questions. Um, Dr. Roop Noreen, um, Dr. Johnson, if you would like, I will forward the slides to some of our alum. You can introduce some of them and tell us a little bit about how they're doing and where they are. Sure, go ahead to the first one, I think is the research, isn't it? Yeah, so 
Um, first of all, we don't graduate quite as many as the health study side, so um, we're a longer program. So this is just a couple of the ones that have uh, more recently graduated. So um, uh, you, you'll notice two of these are now PhD students. So I had mentioned that um, this is one kind of track that our students take after they are finished. So Sydney and Ivana are, are both PhD students now, uh, one at Duke and one at North Carolina. Sydney was in the, the shark lab, the GHRI uh, shark lab. So she did uh, shark um, ecology research or shark genetics research. Um, and then we have uh, Rebecca who has moved on to work at a, an actual scientific laboratory. So similar to Lyle where who, who's still in academia but working in a lab, um, that's kind of another path that some of our students take um, as well as environmental work and, and things like that. So. Um, so these are just a few examples. Uh, Deanne has lots of lots of examples. Um, if you do come through our program, we always appreciate keeping in touch with us so we know exactly what you're doing after the fact. Sometimes uh, students disperse and then we never hear from them again. Um, luckily, uh, you know, from the health study side, we have, you know, the dental school and the health and the uh, medical school. So some of our alumni stick around so we know a little bit more about what they're doing. So I'll pass it off to uh, Dr. Rootman. Thank you, Dr. Johnston. And uh, we are waiting for one of the health studies alum to come in. She is um, leaving work. She said she should be here in about five minutes. And I really wanted her to speak to the students because she was one of our first graduates and she has now completed her PA program. She did it in New York. She came down here and within two weeks of coming home, she got a job. So she's now working. So um, as you look here, these were um, three of the students here were from our first class 2019. And everyone from that 2019 class is actually doing something in the professional field. Alma is in um, dental school. Karina is here in our own optometry school. Andrea actually works as an adjunct professor for us, but she's also a wellness coordinator at Memorial Regional Hospital. And Nubar, who graduated last year and was a really good friend of Wilner is here. Um, is in dental school also in Tufts. So as you can see, our students stay at NSU and a lot of them actually also do go away to other programs. Ashley was actually accepted to NSU and accepted to South, but she decided to go to South University because she said she had been in school constantly in Florida since she started kindergarten, so she wanted to get away for a while. Manu and Sarah are both at the Alabama College of Osteopathic Medicine. They've actually met each other there, even though they were different years. And um, Alec is finishing up his physician assistant program. Evan and uh, Kayla both went to NSU. Um, Evan is in our dental program. Kayla is in our physician assistant program. And Sarah Amaris went off to Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. Now, Juliet was a very unusual story. Juliet came in wanting to be an optometrist, and halfway through the health studies program, she said she didn't really think she wanted to do that anymore, but she wasn't really sure what she wanted to do. So she graduated in 2019, and we got her a research position at um, our College of Dental Medicine, and she started working there with one of the faculty members got very interested in research and is now a PhD student at FIU or FAU. Couple more of our success stories. Chelsea decided to go the route of chiropractic medicine and she's now at Kaiser. Uh, Kaylin went off to Turo in New York for medical school. Danielle is here on our main campus at our anesthesiology assistant program. And Pedro is also in New York for dental medicine. Wow, we have a lot of photos. Um, Erica, and Erica is actually on our main campus also. She's in our anesthesiology assistant program. And Chris Garcia, um, after he graduated, he actually also was waiting, not sure if he wanted to start medical school right away or not. And so we also got him a position as um, doing research at uh, Health Professions Division. And after he was done, he applied to medical school. He was waiting. He taught a couple of labs for us. And it was two weeks before the start of this fall semester, he got the call that he had been accepted to Indiana University School of Medicine. 
And so he took that one weekend, packed up and left. Aram is a research assistant at Cincinnati Children's Hospital and she's applying to get into an MD PhD program. Alex went on to do an additional master's in public health and he also now works in the field of public health. And we're happy to answer any questions until Jody gets here. We had a couple of questions in um, the Q&A that I think are important to, to go ahead and answer live for you guys. Um, so there was a question regarding the May 15th application deadline for summer 2023. Let me just reiterate that health studies has an application deadline of May 15th. So just that concentration and students that are applying for health studies May 15th means that you'll be starting for summer 2023. The program, because this was another part of the question, does start June of 2023. So that is why the application deadline is May 15th. It's giving opportunities for students who may have later graduation dates to be able to complete. Um, another question that was there that also pertains to the health studies program, you have to have completed your undergraduate academics prior to the start of the health studies program. So generally we have orientation the week prior to classes starting. And at that orientation, I will be reaching out to any student who hadn't finalized their graduation. So hadn't provided us with a final transcript um, conferring their graduation date at that time. Um, I I think Megan cut off, got cut off. So sorry about that, guys. Um, I do know that Jody just joined us. So as we said, um, Jody, if you can hear us and you want to, um, you know, unmute yourself and kind of talk. Yeah, there, there we are. Hello, Jody. Welcome. Um, and just kind of talk to us about, you know, your experiences at NSU, how it helped set you up for the future and just your general fantastic things you just, I was just told you started about two weeks ago, which is great. Congratulations. Hi, yes, I actually just ran out of clinic, so I just got home. Um, but hi, everyone. I'm Jody. I'm a board certified physician assistant. Um, I started working about two weeks now in urology at um, Goose Urology. He also does um, bladder reconstructive surgery. Um, I did the Master of Science program. I was a part of the first class. Um, so that was fun. <laughs> but um, the program was amazing. And I believe that it helped me a lot while I was in PA school. It actually made PA school a little bit easier for me because a lot of what I already learned in the program, we were learning in PA school. Um, so it was a big plus in that sense. And also, it also helped me to be, I guess, more mature academically and also as a person versus, you know, someone coming straight out of like undergrad, um, which nothing's wrong with that, but then it just helps you to understand the concepts and understand what, you know, like what you're getting yourself into for professional school and what hard work that you have to put in basically. So um, I would definitely recommend the program. Uh, it was, it's a one-year program and I had a good time while doing it. Um, the professors are there for you, Dr. Rutnarin, Dr. Jaffe, like all the professor, professors are there to help you, guide you along the way. And they'll try to make it as easy as possible, but it's also professional school, graduate school. So you know that you're gonna have to work. So you just have to keep that in mind too. I don't know if that answers any questions that you guys may have, or if there's anything else that you would like me to touch on. Thank you, Jody. Um, again, students, this is your opportunity to talk to some of our alum and current students that are in these programs. Um, I'll try to answer. I think I saw another question. I think generally we should answer out loud. Um, are there opportunities for all of the classes to be taken online? The answer to that simply is no. Um, for our health studies program, that is a completely face-to-face, in-person program. Our research program does offer some coursework online, but generally the entire program is considered a face-to-face -face program. And we, as um, Dr. Schmidt had uh, alluded to earlier in the presentation, we are coming 
to a bioinformatics program that will be offered later um, fall 2023 is, is our projected start date. That program will offer an online component. Um, more information about that will come in the future. Um, so if that's something that you have interest in when I share my email address with you guys, please feel free to let me know so that way I know who to shoot some information to once that program is available. But again, the floor is open for you guys to ask questions of our faculty um, and of our alum and of one of our current students. So just to jump in here, Megan, that the bioinformatics concentration is going to be fully online. So all classes will be online. There won't be in-person courses. But again, that's fall 2023. It's not in place yet. Hey, Dr. Rupnarine, there's a question. Um, how will this program help me get into medical school? If you would like to um, reiterate some of the information you, you gave us earlier. So a very interesting question. Um, let's make it clear that half of this is going to be up to you. Okay, you are the one that has to put in the work. It's a one-year program. We are trying to be as close as possible as it is to professional school with the courses that you're going to be taking with the rigor that you will be taking. You will have the same numbers of tests and exams. You will have a comprehensive exam at the end of the program that's also going to mimic, mimic the step exams that you take when you're in medical school. Um, with that being said, along with the Kaplan test um, prep program, you should be taking your MCAT exam. You have to, of course, get the score that the medical schools want. And this program is going to help you if you didn't do very well in undergrad, It'll help you hopefully to improve your grades so you can show professional schools that you are capable of graduate work. Now, I'd like to also turn that over to Chelsea and let Chelsea answer, how do you think that this actually helps you to get into medical school? Hi, okay. So I think the program helped me get into medical school because Undergraduate school is very different from professional school in the sense that I feel like, at least for me in undergrad, I would study a couple of times a week, go to work, go to clubs, do this, do that. Um, but I had a chance to like really focus on my work in, uh, in the master's program. Plus it was a lot more complex topics that were more intertwined. Um, so we would have like more clinical correlates and seeing how things would apply to medicine when you're in school versus if you were taking, you know, biochemistry in undergrad, they would just talk about biochemistry and that's it. Um, so I think it helped me understand that I wanted to be in medicine a little more by kind of confirming those clinical correlates with me, like, oh, this is interesting to me. Um, and then in terms of helping you get it into medical school as well. Like Dr. Rupnarine said, it's half the battle is just you um, and, you know, getting good grades and like doing your extracurriculars and things like this. But also you, you just learn how to study a little bit better. You, you figure out how to be more disciplined. And I think that's the thing that helped me the most. And just doing that in order to get into medical school, you're able to speak about those in your secondaries and saying like you grew as a person in, you know, in this master's program. Um, and it's mainly about your grades and things like that. That's the only thing that this can solidly give you. But besides that, I feel like as you mature, you're able to be a better applicant in that way, in addition to, you know, your transcripts having an A on them. And Megan, there was another question. Um, why did these alumni choose this? program specifically, and I would like all the alumni, both research and health studies, to answer that question. Why did you choose this particular program? Um, why don't we start with, I'll start from the top. Who's at the top? Okay, Jody, you're at the top, so why don't you go ahead and answer that question first? Okay, um, and kind of just to add on what Chelsea said in regards to how did this program, well, I know she was talking specifically to medical school, but for PA school, it helped me too as well, because in the sense of when I had interviews, they were impressed that, okay, I already went through basically um, a graduate program, so they know I understand what the challenges are going to be. And, you know, at the end of the day, professional schools, they want to keep their, you know, pass rate high, so they want to make sure that you're going to be able to stay in the program. 
So it also looks good, you know, on your application that you've already gone through um, graduate level school. So you know what it takes. So that's how that kind of helped me get into PA school. In regards to why I chose this program, um, this, the answer is kind of similar. Um, I wanted to see when I was, I, I did undergrad at NOVA and I wanted to, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do if I wanted to do medical school or if I wanted to do PA school. I got accepted to both, but ultimately chose PA school. And in that year that I was trying to decide, I did, decided to do the Master of Science in Biological Sciences um, program. And I wanted to get a feeling of what professional school was gonna be like, what graduate level school work was gonna be like, but also one that was tailored towards what I would potentially go into. And because the course, the curriculum, it's you know pathophysiology, anatomy, biochemistry, all of which you're gonna learn in either medical school or PA school. And so I wanted to see what, if I was able to manage, but also to kind of challenge and mature myself before I moved on to a professional level. So that was my main goal of um, applying to the program. Estefania, how about you? Yeah, so I actually um, did college at NOVA. So I was already working with Dr. Smith on a research project. And I actually feel like I got into the biological track a little bit different than most people because my end goal is actually medical school. So a lot of people I feel like typically would go to the biomedical track, but I, to be honest, kind of went into research because I felt like I needed to, to apply for medical school and I ended up loving it. It ended up being one of my favorite parts of my day. Um, and I started working on a project that I was very, very passionate about. And I kind of got to that point where I was like, do I work for a year? Do I go for a master's? And I kind of came to the realization that I'm only going to get more opportunities by having another degree and by expanding my education. And it's only going to make me a stronger candidate. Um, and I really loved my research project that I was working on so much that to me, it was worth it to take that extra year to further um, expand and finish my research. And I would actually say it paid off. We're actually right now in the process of getting published. So I'm very excited about that. It's a very long process if you do end up going that route, but it's very, very worth it in the end. So I decided to just do that track. And like some of you, I'm sure are, I was kind of scared about that two year. Um, track you know two years does seem like a long time in the moment but I promise you it goes by like this I can't believe I already finished my first year already it seems like I just started last week but it really does go by fast and I also want to say that a benefit to having a more spaced out schedule is that you do have time to work and work on your research so if you are a student that needs help like paying for your master's program, I'm sure we all do, you do have that time in your schedule to work. And there are a lot of good opportunities on campus to work. I was actually a graduate teaching assistant. So I was teaching the biology one lab and you get a scholarship with that as well as being paid. So there are a lot of opportunities out there for you as well. But overall, that's why I picked my program. And I, I am very happy I did. It's kind of motiva motivated me to want to do maybe a MD PhD because I do love both. Um, but yeah, I think regardless of what route you go, you're only opening up more doors for yourself. Thank you. Uh, Wilner, do you want to say why you chose this program? So I wasn't aware of the master's program when I started undergrad, which was also at NSU. And I finished my undergraduate studies a little bit early, it took me three years, and I wasn't sure what to do with that gap year as um, per se, because first of all, I hadn't taken my DAT and I wasn't aware of the entire process that takes to get into dental school or medical school for that matter, because I wasn't too sure what I wanted to do. And it wasn't until like I took 
um, histology with Dr. Rutnerin that I had somebody finally speak to me about opportunities there um, and methods that worked into getting into these um, professional studies programs. So she mentioned um, the opportunity of, the, of what a master's program could do and to your resume and make you um, a very competitive candidate for these schools that are extremely selective when it comes to um, picking and choosing whoever applies. And also I had a friend of mine who convinced me to, you know, hop in with the master's program with him. And once I was already in it, I realized that, whoa, this is exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. It's all about learning the anatomy and the sciences that makes humans human, you know, like us. And that's essentially what you will be doing once you start studying, uh, whether you go to medicine route or um, optometry or dental or physician assistant or anesthesiology, with, with whichever profession you choose in the health studies um, world, these um, courses that you take in this program are essentially the backbone foundation that you will need to be able to thrive in the amount of exams and workload that you'll get in your respective program in the future. And like I believe Chelsea mentioned, to make you a stronger applicant and have something to talk about in your interviews, because you'd be surprised at the amount of people that these colleges interview and at the minute amount of people that they actually choose to go through. Um, so it's all about that competitiveness. And this is, the, uh, in my opinion, one of the best ways to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Wilner. How about you, Lau? Um, well, I actually first applied for the health studies track and I got accepted. And then I realized that it was a lot more medicine and I kind of wanted to do more research. I, I thought I would have more time to do both. So um, I applied for the research track and got accepted and did that and and what really appealed to me kind of also what um Steph was saying that you have a lot of more time to sort of like decide like your your curriculum and your schedule and sort of like your classes aren't the like the thing tying you down to school like you you kind of have a lot more like work school life balance um, and that really appealed to me because uh, I was able to get a job as a, a research assistant in the lab. So I was getting uh, paid for the research I was doing for my thesis, which was great because um, I'm an international student. So every <laughs> penny helps. Um, but honestly, like the ability to be able to do research um, and learn things like the classes we took, like genomics, immuno, those are all things that are that seem separate, but are all like essential in, in any sort of like biological research. And there are things that, like I said earlier, help me today in the field that I am, I'm in immunology. Um, so it was just, it was just a, the, the ideal like combination of lab time, research, independent like work and classes that were like relevant to like my future uh, career. So yeah. Thank you, Lau. And finally, Chelsea, can you tell us why you chose this program? Yeah, so um, I chose this program because quite honestly, my undergrad GPA wasn't the best. Um, and I knew I needed something to, I wanted to be honest with myself and I knew I needed something to kind of boost that GPA because I wasn't going to apply if I didn't think I had a chance to even get in because it's expensive, it's long, and you know, you know the show. Um, and so I was looking around for programs and people were talking about certificates and, you know, post backs, you know, informal type of things. But I knew I wanted something that was going to kind of be concrete in what they were going to give me, like a master's degree or, or something um, that I have on my transcript that was a little more official. Um, and so when I was looking around at programs, 
I came across this one, which NSU was closer to home because I went to UCF for undergrad in Orlando. Um, and I saw the course list of everything we would take in the whole year that we would have. Um, and I really liked it because I felt like those are the classes that I needed to prepare for med school or for what I wanted to do. Um, and most of the other programs I looked at didn't really talk about what courses they were gonna offer. They kind of just said general things. So I liked the school because it was transparent in what they were gonna give me. And um, it just seemed more useful to me to apply to this program. And it was a smaller program and that's what I wanted. So I applied to this program because it seemed like it kind of fit my needs a little bit more for what I wanted to even apply to med school. Thank you, Chelsea. So we got a lot of questions about GPAs and how um, how you guys think your GPAs from undergrad versus a master's degree um, helped you get into your grad your professional programs. So um, I, I guess a few of you guys could answer this. Um, another part of the same question was. Do you think your school uh, looked at both GPAs, combined them? How do you think that the GPA port part of it worked? Oh, so I was just answering this question on the chat. Um, so from my understanding, I'm not too sure of how medical school does it or how other graduate programs like PA school do it, but um, when I applied to dental school, they calculated my GPA utilizing all, absolutely all the classes that I've taken at the college level, which included my uh, dual enrollment classes from high school even. And they just combine it all and mush it all together and they divide the GPA in different um, categories, science GPA, labs GPAs, uh, humanities blah, 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 all, all, all sorts of GPAs that you can imagine that you can quantify and classify all the classes you ever took will be calculated. And then there will be an overall and there will be your graduate, undergraduate, right? In the end, the number that's there, the, the one that combines absolutely all the GPAs that they have is gonna be your like net GPA. However, that is not going to reflect um, your competency as a, as a candidate because you take more classes in undergraduate than in a 12 month, um, 12 month or 24 month master's program. However, the courses that you take in those um, graduate programs will account or will account for more or will show more grit of you as a student, given that they are more current and the, the um, rigor of the courses are gonna be more uh, significant when it comes to the classes that you will be taking in those professional schools, because they're going to be more representative of the type of things that you will see. It's not going to be like undergrad where, for, I'm going to give an example, like in an anatomy and physiology and undergrad, you get fed uh, one chapter is one system versus in the master's program, you take a regional approach in which you view every part of the every system involved in a particular part of the body, and that's more or less what you do in medical, dental, or uh, in, in these graduate programs, in these schools. So your graduate GPA is going to weigh in more and is going to speak more for where you are currently than when you were in undergraduate. Nevertheless, both are important, but if you ask me, graduate GPA is more important. I think for PA school it was the same thing too in the common app, which is called like CASPA. They give you like a breakdown of like your um, undergraduate, undergraduate and graduate GPA, and it breaks it down into like science versus um, non science courses, and it shows you like how they kind of like um, weigh them. But I would definitely say that the graduate GPA does help with like when you are applying into your program because on every interview, in both when I did medical school and in um, PA school interviews, you know, they were saying, wow, this is what your graduate GPA was. And as I said before, at the end of the day, they want to make sure that yes, they have a lot of applicants, but they're looking for the ones that they know will complete the program and will keep their pass rates up. 
So if they see that you already have a strong GPA in graduate school, they know that you can handle the work. They know that you can handle um, the challenges that are going to come to you. So I, I believe that the graduate GPA does weigh a lot when you're applying to professional schools. Um, okay, so there are two questions I wanted to answer. One was, um, can you get a great GPA from this program? So I'll let Dr. Johnston answer for his section, but for health studies, the alumni that are speaking here today had great GPAs, which is why they got into their professional programs. Once again, getting that great GPA is going to be up to you, right? They got into their professional programs because they did have great GPAs at the end of this. For those of you that want to know our graduation rate, our graduation rate from the health studies um, concentration is 90%. And um, Dr. Johnson can answer for the research. Yeah, so like Dr. Rutnerin mentioned, you know, the GPA is largely up to you. Um, you know, our, our um, the research and uh, capstone courses themselves are pass or fail. So the graded components are your core classes and your electives. And um, like I said, you know, it, it's up to you. Uh, many of our students have gone on to PhD programs and I can tell you to get into PhD programs, they look heavily at your GPA in your master's program. So, um, you know, obviously those students have graduated with very um, high GPAs to even go on to a PhD. So um, we do require a minimum of uh, a C um, or above to even stay in the program. And I can't think of anybody that has been dropped out of the program because of a GPA. So, you know, we do, the students do well. Um, and we do have a, a few students that have stayed around for a while, um, but uh, we do everything we can to try to get students through. And again, I, I can't think of, um, we haven't, uh, the program is relatively new, but I can't think of uh, maybe one or two students have dropped out of the program. So the graduation rate is, is, is quite high. And kind of just going back on what Dr. Mary says, um, yes, your GPA is going to be, you know, if you put in the work, you're going to have a good GPA. Is it impossible? No, like you can do it. You just have to study. It's it's graduate school. You're going to have to put the work in. It's not going to be like undergrad where, you know, you can study the night before the exam. And at the end of the day, you don't want to think like that either, because when you go into medical school, you don't want to be like cramming at the end of the night, because at the end of the day, you're going to be taking care of patients. So you need to know this knowledge. You need to understand the concepts and not just trying to like remember it for the exam. So if you put in the work, you definitely can get a GPA. Um, it's not impossible. It's just that you're going to have to work for it. And I would also say, um, you know, it's a lot more independent in grad school too, where your, your professors are not necessarily on top of you for deadlines and, and to get things in and to make sure you're not missing assignments. You know, we expect you to work at a higher level than what you work in, in undergrad. Um, and that is why, you know, most of the students that are in this grad program um, graduate with good GPAs because they, you know, they work. It, it's, it's a lot more work than it is in undergrad. But you know, that's the whole point. It, it opens up um, better opportunities for you than what you would have just with an undergrad degree. So somebody asked, would you recommend working part time during this program? Um, it can be done. I, so I didn't mention, but I'm actually an alumni of the master's and the PhD program at no Nova, and I worked full time during that, but it was very difficult. Um, you know, I uh, I did the same thing in my undergrad. Um, so it is possible to do it. Um, you you know, you don't take as many courses as you would in undergrad. The typical load for the research side is two courses per term. So it is possible to do that. But again, it's a whole lot more work. So you need to be very driven um, to be able to handle that high of a workload. I'll, 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 um, for the health study side, I don't think it's possible probably to even work part time because it's such a condensed program and you're taking four courses at a time. And um, I don't know if anybody has successfully held a, another job and, and done that, but I'll uh, uh, let uh, Dr. Rutmerin uh, answer that. So we do have a couple of our students at work as um, laboratory assistants 
and a few that um, become graduate teaching assistants as well. It is not recommended that you really take or do, you know, like part-time 20 hour a week, no, because then you're actually jeopardizing your courses itself and you're here to get a good GPA. Um, one of the questions in the Q&A right now, it's, they say it's for the alumni. They want to know, do you think graduate school is easier or harder than undergrad? That, I, I want to answer. It depend, I would say it depends on how you define easy or hard um, from your own personal view. Um, I would definitely say, and I'm pretty sure all the alumni here would agree that it is definitely more rigorous than anything you've been exposed to in undergrad, simply because of the way that it gets taught and the, the, ex, uh, the expectation from the professors is way different than it was from when you were in undergraduate school. Like you don't have homework, you don't have uh, written assignments as much as you would in undergrad to boost your grade is mainly like exam driven, at least for the health studies concentration. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's something similar to that in, in research too, but definitely more rigorous, which requires more time to study, which means that you will be learning a lot more information. So I, I'd like to jump in here as an alumni and as a faculty member. Um, one of the things that you do get to do, though, in the research program and in the, or in the health studies side, too, is study things you're interested in. And so while the, the courses are much more rigorous, you know, like I mentioned, we don't we don't spoon feed you everything. But um, typically, you're much more vested in learning the material because it's much more interesting to you than, you know, having to take some weird um, you know, arts course in undergrad to require uh, to fulfill a requirement, whereas in grad school, you're doing what you want to do. And so um, that's a that's a huge benefit. And I would say um, I wouldn't say it's easier or harder. I would just say because obviously you're going to be exposed to something totally new that you've never seen before, because you're going to there are going to be weeks when you're going to have three exams and it's going to be three hardcore exams, like three regional anatomy, um, you're gonna have regional anatomy or pathophysiology or biochemistry all in one. And you're gonna feel like, oh my God, the world is ending because it's a lot to study. But it's like that when you go to professional school. I thought at the time when I was doing graduate school that, oh my gosh, this is like the hardest thing I've ever done until I got into PA school. And I was like, okay, this is the hardest thing I've ever done. But it helps with time management. I think if you have good time management and you basically, um, you know, structure yourself where you you study a little bit every day. I know how as cliche as that sounds and how your professors tell you you have to study a little bit every day. It comes in very clutch, basically, because once you get to that exam, it's going to make it so much easier when you have to study. So I think that I wouldn't say it's easier, but I do say the it's more rigorous and it's a lot more work. but it's once you you enjoy what you're doing, as um, Mr. Johnson said, you'll find it it comes to you easy. And once you get into a rhythm, I mean, of course, the first couple of weeks, probably the first month, it's gonna be you're gonna feel overwhelmed. But once you come down with a proper study technique, then it'll just start flowing properly, and everything just will start be like smooth sail smooth sailing for you. I wanted to jump in. Um, and kind of like give the flip side of that. Um, Cause I feel like for the research track, there's definitely times where it feels like kind of like that where everything's happening all at once. You have like 30 million deadlines due, but it's definitely not as um, intense in that sense because you, you, you can do two to three courses, you can do more, but your, your workload for in terms of class is less so you do have a lot more time to dedicate to that but at the same time you have to dedicate yourself to research so it, it does teach you time management um but i think in terms of like what professional life is like in in research it's a lot more like that rather than just you're in school to learn in class versus 
in application and lab and kind of like manage your time. So I, I don't think the question of is it easier versus harder is applicable. I think it's, it's, it's a different tool kit, you know? So if you, if you have the dedication to go into the health studies, like kudos, it's, it's intense, but if you're more like into hands-on, I think the research is, is a lot more doable. I wanted to give the flip side for the health sciences track and say personally to me, it was hard. Um, it was pretty hard to, to do the health sciences track, but in the master's program, there are a lot more people who care about you than in undergrad. So it ends up becoming that you're not alone. You're not just at home grinding. Your head is in your hands. You don't know what to do. Um, for me, there were a lot more people who shared my interest, who wanted to study the same things I did. And so I, I wasn't studying alone ever, really. And that's what helped me get the grades, a good GPA, is that I had people to study with. Also, even though they're not going to spoon feed you all of the information for the courses, they are there. Your professors are there to answer your questions. There are no stupid questions. They're there to just hear about your personal life, see how you're doing, how you're coping. Um, so it, it was hard, like in terms of content, but you felt a little more at ease knowing that there were people around you who wanted you to succeed instead of undergrad where you're kind of just like a number. Um, and, and that's what will really help you get through this, especially something as difficult as the health sciences track. Like we all have difficult things to do, but you know, we have less time to like have a personal life. Um, but you'll be able to do it because you'll have people there who are standing right beside you, wanting to do it with you and wanting you to succeed. Yeah, and there was a question earlier that I know that um, Professor Johnson answered as well that I want to make sure you got a chance to as well. It was asking about prerequisites for the health studies program. I don't know if you could answer that real quick, just what might entail from like an undergraduate classes to be able to uh, be accepted to the health studies concentration. So um, we look at the overall transcripts when you send it in. We look at personal statements, et cetera. And we are going to look at grades, but we really do want to see that you have done upper level biology, chemistry, you know, classes and has the math and the physics as well, because otherwise you're going to be at a real disadvantage when you come into the program. So we do want to see that you have done upper level biology classes, that you do have your basic chemistries, organic chemistry, and hopefully biochemistry as well, and that you do have, um, you know, physics and or math. Yeah, and I, I answered in the chat, but it's it's very similar for the research side. Um, we don't have specific courses that we're looking for, but we are looking for general upper level biology courses, chemistry courses, physics, you know, all of those things, um, because we want to make sure that you will be able to succeed in the program. So we look at that you've taken them. We do look uh, at the, the grades you got in those as well, as well as your overall GPA. And then uh, specific to the research side, we look pretty closely at your um, personal statement to make sure you have researched the program and will fit in with our faculty. So if you've identified a faculty member you want to work with or a topic that you want to work with, we want to make sure we can um, fulfill your desires and what you want to study. So that does uh, have a, or does weigh into our decision making process as well. So there's this question, how different is undergraduate biochemistry from advanced biochemistry? I would like to take it on. <laughs> okay, so undergraduate biochemistry, if you take it like in a regular university, it's probably like around 20 chapters, which is half of the book. And it ends after all your metabolism cycles. And I know because I I'm, I'm about to finish dental biochemistry right now. Um, and advanced biochemistry is exactly what I'm seeing right now. With the difference that in advanced biochemistry, we finished the full 40 something chapters of the book. And then we continued with um, clinical presentations from uh, cases and a lot of journal articles and you did a lot of research when it comes to that, but it all ties in together with everything else that you're doing from a health aspect. 
So it's very different because now you're actually seeing what the biochemistry is for rather than pure brute memorization of enzymes and cycles and things with random names that people think they're fancy. But they're both essentially the foundations of everything that you will be doing. Just one more than the other. All right, everyone, um, if there are any more questions, that's been so many, it's been fantastic. Um, we're going to kind of wrap this up this evening because I know other people have to go back to work, studying, um, maybe get some sleep for those of you that are still in school. It sounds like you don't sleep a lot as it is. Maybe coffee is how you survive. Not entirely sure. Um, but thank you so much for being here, both participants and our panel. Um, so if there do any further questions, please feel free to reach out to anyone on my team. We will forward it on to either the alumni or the current faculty members that are here with us this evening. And I'm sure they have no problem answering you guys. Um, so once again, thank you so much. Um, and for those of you that are going to be receiving this as a recording, because I know there were people from around the country that just couldn't be here this evening or honestly around the world from some of our transcripts that I've seen come through. Um, you know, we will be forwarding this on to you as well. So thank you so much for attending. Panelists, thank you so much for being here. I hope you all have a great evening and a great weekend. Take care.